Today, we're doing another epic home studio tour. I'm very excited. It's with my friend Robert Marvin. What's cool about Robert is he has his feet in both the music production and artist development side of things, working with artists like right from the beginning all the way to the finished uh, result. Also like engineering and mixing the projects, but he also has his feet in the music licensing and sync world. Robert is very talented. He's been doing this for over about 20 years or so. Uh, some of the people he've worked, he has worked with are very, very cool. I've jotted some down here. We've got Matt Carney, LP, Snoop Dogg, Kelly Clarkson, Bob Marley, Ben Rector, and Ruel, and many, many others. Very talented dude, and he's got a very cool home studio setup. So if you guys like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, go uh, follow Robert. I'll put some links to him down in the description. Also, thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. And I had to shout out something new that I got and that we're using for the first time in this video. It is these mics from Sennheiser, which are uh, digital wireless lavalier mics. And these are the AVX Mark II. They are very high-end um, lavalier mics. I'm actually using one right now. And we use them in the walkthrough of this studio tour and I gotta tell you, it's a game changer for the audio. Shout out to Sennheiser. Thank you Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Uh, also, if you guys didn't know, I actually started another channel that is a studio tour clips channel. I'll put a link to it in the description as well. But yeah, with that said, let's go check out Robert's Epic Home Studio. This is a pretty cool setup here. I noticed we're kind of in the basement, right? Yeah, basement. It's like our whole downstairs, but yeah. So you have couple kids three girls and you and your wife work from home yeah we both work here it's kind of perfect a little separate entrance my parents found the house and they're like oh, wow. hey you guys should check out this house it would work and we looked at it we're like well this could totally work for us just because the house the way it was designed like what is over the studio is such a big deal like a lot of my friends yeah were like, oh man my studio is underneath oh yeah like the kids room or something yeah and can't play music but this really has been perfect this room immediately tightens up. That's yeah, because we treated it all with the whisper wall. And... Is this a second window? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like invisible. That's awesome. What kind of organ is that? Well, it's not a cool one. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a Hammond. I think it's like an M, I wanna say M something, three, one, two, three, one of those numbers. That's pretty sweet, I like the That's a small family piece, factor. that was, given to me. Can you give me a little bit of a background on what got you started in music? Yeah, I played piano since I was little. You know, I'd always run to my grandma's organ. You yeah. know what I mean? Anytime you're somewhere at church or somewhere, just go to the piano. And so then my parents put me in piano lessons. I went to school for architecture. But really? I would do music for fun. And then I, this guy was in the school of music. He's like, hey, he heard my, I, I would make music. And he's like, you should come over to school of music. I'll show you how to record vocals. So I randomly would go over there and had I known all this stuff I would be learning would eventually lead to me making a CD. Yeah. And then that CD made it all the way to Nashville. I okay. produced like a reel of music and then I produced like a boy band. And then some labels were interested. They told me I should move to Nashville. I could have a career in producing. I moved here June of 2000. A friend of mine from Oregon, Matt Carney, he would come to the studio and he was like freestyling and rapping and I was really into that kind of like, how to do beats and all that kind of stuff. So put a little CD together and he got offered a deal. So then he he went back home, got his stuff. He moved out, we lived together. Nice. We just started doing music on the side and he ended up signing. And our careers are kind of like tied on a lot of ways because we've worked, you know, 20 plus years on music, so. And then I see you got like Kelly Clarkson, Toby Mac. Yeah, when I first started, I did mostly Christian. I love artist development. I really like working with people and doing the whole finding a sound, coming up oh, with the whole cool. project together. You also do stuff for licensing, right? Yeah, do stuff with music by then. Yeah, yes. Different yeah, I work projects. a lot with a guy named Josh, and he goes by Super Duper. Okay. And I'm a bunch of different projects with him. Virgil Arliss, Lone Waves. Oh. And we have a thing called Daisy Chain, and I did some stuff for Music Vid on a project called Kenna. Let's talk about this room for a second. Yeah. The treatment in here, what's happening? It's just regular sheet rock, and okay. I think we, um, went over the top of it, of a, another layer of sheetrock, and then it did um, two by two framing to you know support all this whisper wall yeah. stuff that holds the fabric. And then there's like rock wool 
behind it that's held by straps, as you can see. So you got it on the ceilings? Yeah. This is drywall though, right? That's just regular. It was pretty dead already, so. Yeah, well, I mean, it sounds it's amazing in here. So what's up with these mics? Chandler Limited. Okay, there's a Chandler Red, which is, that's a newer one. Dang, that's a crazy mount. <laughs> I know, it's so over the top. Um, that's like a 67. Oh, okay. Kind of, I don't know if nice. you've heard of the Corby huh. mount system. No, I haven't. The, the heads come off, they, they have all these different heads, like 251, 47, ah. 67. They just pop off, C800. Oh, whoa. Pretty cool. So vocals? Maybe yeah. sometimes acoustic guitar or something. Oh yeah, 100%. That is a Bayer ribbon mic. That has been used for sure on guitars. This is old. Yeah. M260. It's so quiet. Yeah, this is cool. Latch Lake, Stereo Coles. Yep. Yamaha. Well, this is old. This is from the 80s. It can load a floppy disk. Uh-huh. Class, awesome. But it is old school MIDI, so it's actually can play from the computer, it's pretty cool. When you're in your control room, yep. and you're sitting there. Yeah, there's a latency a bit, but I can play it from in there. It's more if you play it in here, it records the MIDI in there too. Oh, so cool. you can yeah. edit it yeah. and then spit it back out. Can I put you on the spot and hear, yeah. hear this? Can, can you play a little Let's something? Let's play it itself. Okay. All right, what song do you want? Um, Peaches. Ooh, Peaches is number five. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Wow. My daughter was down here playing, my youngest. Mm -hmm. She's like, Dad, look at this thing I recorded. She played, and I was like, Wait, what'd you do? She, I didn't even know I could do this, but she figured out it, if you hit record. Yeah. It'll record it on the floppy, what you do. It's yeah. just like playing and then playing it back. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I didn't even know I could do that. And that's a random find of a piano. But weirdly, it was the only one I had. And that's on so many records. There's this Matt Carney song that people always love the piano sound called Ships of the Night. And all the piano on that is this. This is very chimey. Yeah. And then you got this six just sitting out here. I can take this off your hands yeah, if you know, want. Right? It can find its way on anything and everything. I feel like that's like just the easiest synth ever to use. And I think I picked up this, these little guys from... Uh, what are those called? Launchers? Yeah. So you got the coals on those to juice them up a little bit? Yeah, you don't have to gain them up as much. They do sound a lot better. What are the priests that you use on these? The um, Ripper Neath Shelford channels. Nice. Just because of the EQ, I can... Yep kind of dial the whole thing in. But I've used Crane Song Pre's as well. And honestly, the the Chi G1 that we were talking about, the Chandler, mm -hmm. the, the decomp. Yep. That was always on my piano. Oh, interesting. And that squishy sound was like part of like what I've been trying to get with that. Yeah. I haven't quite figured it out yet. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'd mentioned it before, the, uh, the lights that you <laughs> have up there. Oh, on the sides, yeah make it feel like there's some sort of um, a little like a of, skylight up there. Yeah, that was like kind of the thought. I was like being in a cave. This is a big cloud, right? Because yeah. this is separate, there's a you ceiling up there. Down. All of those, every, the, well, everything's been br brought in. You can see on the sides, actually here. Right? Oh, that's, that's where it comes out? Yeah. yeah. So you can control, you know, access everything from out there. And then you have a f handful of things in here that are all kind of wired up, ready to roll. So everything just goes right into all my pre's. Nice. So I could record out in the lounge or the other part of the studio. I used to have nice. a lot more gear, yeah, channels, but now that I'm just down to eight, I could, yeah, it just comes in and then hardware inserts on the compressors. So yeah, so tell me a little bit about these these key instrument instruments that you have in here. You got the Meltron. This yep. is like the newer. Meltron, right? Yeah, the the I, main Sweden. It's the uh, it's awesome. I don't know if you ever played it, but oh yeah, it, it has the pressure sensitive. It's just something playable about it, and you can hook up an expression pedal and control it. It's it feels like a musical instrument to me. Stereo out. You got MIDI on it. Yeah, it's it's like individual out per 
A and B. Okay. With like two monos, but yeah, stereo. And then how, where are you coming out of this too? So I have a bunch of keyboards that come into, I have a little mixer here that used to be the hub of other synthesizers I'd have because I mm -hmm. kind of cycle through. Some of them go straight into my Goliath. Some go here and then there. Okay. But I have, because I have a digital patch bay, they're all being mixed in the Goliath. Okay. And then reamped through the reamp there and it goes out through all my pedals. So ah. I can play anything and it goes through the pedals, which is... So you have the dry signal and the reamp yeah. signal. What are these things? So what are those called? Fairfield circuitry... Uh, what's the name of the pedal? Forget what it's... It adds that kind of like tape warble sound. So if we listen to it... Oh, yeah. Weird, right? My mind immediately goes to Jared. It's red licorice. I feel oh, like he's got that. That lo-fi. Yeah. yeah. It's super fun. Fairfield circuitry. Yeah. Reverb. And then, yeah. This is reverb? Yeah. What the, what is that? I've that, never seen that one. Chase Bliss 1978. It's like a, basically like a lexicon, kind of 224. Really cool, all these different presets. Yeah. It's super musical, being able to just adjust. Yeah. Like. Whoa. That. Is this a CP70? CP, yeah, CP60, it's the upright version. Check this out. That knob. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just to play with it when I'm playing. So oh. th this one, the yeah. pre-delay? Crazy, right? I can just sit here and uh, be so inspired. We create little like musical loops. Yeah. Super fun. But I just like was reorganizing and I'm trying to, you know, certain pedals are mono. Mm -hmm. So this is like a stereo setup. Chain, yeah. And then I just need to get the mono one going up and running. But it's just so inspiring. I don't know, there's, obviously you could probably do most of this with some plugins. Mm -hmm. But I think when you're playing real instruments out in the world, yeah, it's just fun to, in the moment, capture something. Yeah. And then edit it. What else we got up there? Profit 10, sequential. Profit 10, Poly 6, which is kind of like the Juno. And then the virus, you got like full analog to digital. Oh, that's nice. It's just beautiful. And then this. But then you have to deal with tuning. Just put a chorus on it, man. Right? It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I've had that like my whole career. Like some yeah. version of that. And it was just kind of before plugins were so powerful, it was really super inspiring in a small format. Yeah. I would just take it on my lap and make presets. That's I, killer. I just kept it and it's still somewhat finds its way. It's just like a good song starter. All right, and let's talk about this desk. All so right. Sterling modular, right? Yeah, so we've got two sort of split racks and then like a third rack here. Is that how it was Yeah, designed? you can pick, you can do no racks. Mm -hmm. You can do a rack here or a rack here or both. If we see if you have rack spaces and you end up buying gear to fill them. Yeah. Because you can't have empty spaces. Do you have empty spaces? No. Did you fill them up? I filled it up see? so fast, dude. <laughs> Just can we touch on some of this gear? Because yeah. there's an interesting combination of stuff that you have here. Yeah, it's all pretty weirdly on purpose because these are my favorite pre's. I love the Crane Song pre's. I've used them on every vocal. They just sound awesome. And they have like the tape emulation built in per channel. Is that kind of like doing what the Silk does on the Neves? Yeah, and, this and is, it's weird. It's like, um, or is Silk turning on a transformer? No, 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 this is transformer. It's already, but the Silk is like harmonic um, saturation. 
Okay. Like the red is more like high end, mm -hmm. and the blue is low end. And you, you just feed it. I think it's like kind of feeding back into itself to get that. Whereas this is emulating tape. I don't know if you've, but Crane Song used to make this, well, they still do Pro Tools plugin called Phoenix. Okay. Um, anyway, this is like hardware version. A lot of people still use it on the master bus. They have like a hardware unit. So I send my vocal out from here, and then I go into these in series. Oh, okay. Which one first? I hit this one first, then yeah. this one. Nice. I usually do both on like two to one, cool. hitting them gently instead of one at four to one. It's just been uh, a sound that I've liked and it's been great. This adds like this bite and high end. I don't know if this is just kind of tames the last bit before going in, kind of like. Is that, is the retro an opto? That or? is a Veramu. The compressor in here is um, what is that called? The diode bridge. Hmm. And weirdly, that's the decomp, same. Oh, okay. Diode bridge, I think that's what the D stands for. And nice. that's another specific sound. Now, this this is two channels, yep. and you keep these on the piano, on the coals? Yeah, so I, I keep right now, I mean, I can put them on anything, but yeah. I do record the piano through here. But also when I mix, I have a whole summing set up through this cap, API summing okay. stuff. And then when it comes out of this, it's 6 dB down. It okay. needs to be make, made up on the stereo bus side. Okay. So I'd make that up with the news. So this is a Cappy sum bus. Yep. So you're summing out eight channels. There's 16 channels. 16 channels on this. And then you're coming out stereo. Yeah, so my A bus here, which is all the music, gets fed here. Okay. And then my B bus, which is another color there, is my vocals. And then they get brought straight to the spider. This leaves here, goes to the spider. So this is doing the summing of the music and the vocals. Actually, that's not true. This is the vocals and the music. The computer is summing both of those, but these show up on my uh, returns on my um, Pro Tools setup. Nice. I, I've mixed so much that I kind of find a setting that I've, that's worked. Mm -hmm. And then I've been rocking it. I'm in the middle of mixing right now. It's, it's funny, it's like that's a whole nother conversation. In the box, out the box, and how relevant is it? And yeah. But like I still get a sound from this that I can't really quite get in the box. Maybe you could. Yeah. It just depends. Yeah. On I guess the song. But there's like a low end weight that I feel like is solid. Like it's just oh, yeah. hard to describe. And there's like a depth thing. And then you got this. Or what are these both effects? Are you using both of these? Yeah. Just because I have a I love vocoder and like vocal harmony stuff. Mm -hmm. These are two different awesome sounds for vocal harmonies, which I kind of wish I, if I would have had all that up and running. It's kind of a cool setup. So this is the H8000. They're not making this anymore, right? No, I think they're at the 9000. Yeah, the big. That's like a, this that's a lot. That. This is the, this is probably from the early 2000s, probably, mm -hmm. mid 2000s. Obviously they still sound amazing. The way that they pitch vocals up and down or mm -hmm. any instrument when you play because they both receive mini just mm -hmm. has like a really just different it's a really cool sound you got the chorus echo over there the chorus which classic the space echoes and then what's the this thing right next to the space echo does it look, look like a space like a like a laboratory uh science project yeah i mean reading the knobs i think compressor but i mean look at the back it's pretty cool yeah um, but otherwise, I have no idea. Yeah, some You know the Highland you... Dynamics? Th no. They, it's a really cool um, company making some really awesome tube gear. Um, I love the knobs. Yeah, his, just the overkill. His name's Bryce, and he makes this thing, the BG2, which is normal rack. Mm -hmm. It's like an awesome compressor for vocals or bass, whatever. It's like a British mode, an American mode. It's like RCA. <laughs> or the Altec. He made two, maybe two or a few of these tabletop versions but with EL84s on the output, it's super, just like kind of like a boutique one-off and. Whoa, that's cool. I know, it's so crazy. So what would you put that on? Oh, like when I mix up vocal. Oh, um, cool. That kind of like, that's where I spend a lot of the outboard is the most featured items, like mostly vocals or piano or bass or just something that's like, mm -hmm. You might need that extra bit of nuance. Tell me about these speakers. I have no idea what these big speakers are. They're Gazowski Swiss. Do you, there's a mix engineer named Mick Gazowski. 
he makes uh, some amazing records all the way through my youth. Mm -hmm. But then the more recent stuff he's done, he did the Daft Punk record. The, the last one they did before they broke up. Yep. He mixed that. Anyway, I had gone to his studio a long time ago and I loved his mixes. And he had these huge tenoy, you know the ones with the horn coming out of the woofer? Uh, they're kind of crazy looking. He mixes really loud. And okay. I was like, I would love to be able to turn something up and have headroom. And he's like, yeah, these are harder to find. I'm, there's, they don't make them anymore. And he's like, I'm going to probably make my own monitor. And I was like, oh, if you ever do, I would love yeah. to have a pair. So he, he finally, he ended up making these monitors. And there's a few in Nashville. Um, I, know, um, I know Daft Punk uses them. Max Martin and now Hope Crew uses them. Are those 12 inches? Yeah. That's huge. And then the sub Three is ways. 15. Oh. There's two, but I can only have room for one in here. Yeah. It's a little over the top. Jeez. So much headroom. So I don't, when I'm tracking, cause you know, when you're mixing, it's a lot more controlled, but like when you're making music, mm -hmm. you're sending crazy amount of transients and stuff. And I like to be able to turn it up and not have my speaker be yeah. flashing red at me. Abused, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Are you running everything off of your laptop? I am, I mean, I used, I used to have a tower, the old one back there, but I am running everything off laptop down there. So there's a laptop down there and you have another one that's kind of yeah, on the go. Are, those are those CalDigit I was telling you about, the Thunderbolt docks, which hold up, hook up to the Sontech. Mm, yeah. Uh, and all the drive bays. What are the cards, the UAD cards? Uh, the PCIe. PCIe cards. Yeah. They're in there. And then that, that uh, Nagra is for recording piano as well or doing anything. This is beautiful for recording the piano and then you can do Verispeed and do like mm. half pitch. It's really lots of fun and really cool sounding. So will you record both the dry piano and then you'll get another feed to that? You can do that um, or just, I've run just the mic straight to the tape. Straight to tape, and then nice. I play the tape back at half speed and send that to Pro Tools. Cause then it's going straight, straight to that. Cause it has built in pre's. Who makes that? It's, it's Nagra. They were used for all the movie recordings. Like they're, they're, those are meant to be portable and that's for all, basically every movie you've seen prior to like mid nineties. They're like indestructible and they're run off batteries. That's awesome. So there's like a thing on the back. It's like all D sized batteries. Yeah. It's just pretty funny. All right. And then you're going to the Goliath. The Goliath. That's a, that's like the top dog of antelope no, ones, right? Another top dog now. Galaxy? Yeah, Galaxy. It's like, how much bigger can we go? Yeah. Yeah, Galaxy. It's. Uh, I haven't Wait. actually seen it. I know there's a newer version of the Goliath too. And then there will be the Infinity. There's always something newer. Or they'll add, yeah, exactly, HD to it. So what's like the IO on that? Okay, it's 64. Wow. But it depends on how it's hooked up. You know, like I have a hooked up Thunderbolt. My Pro Tools version, I'm getting 32 channels, which right. is plenty. I think you might have to be Maddie or a different hookup to get all 64. I'm not quite positive. What are some things that you are working on that uh, might be coming out soon? Super duper. Super duper, okay. This new record, I'm helping him with that. Um, I just finished some sync stuff that you like we were chatting about. The Ruel. Ruel? Yeah, her okay. full thing's coming out. I did that with a guy named Topher. I'm trying to think, everything else is too unknown yet. Yeah. To commit to yeah. saying. Absolutely. Until it's out, it ain't out. Yeah, exactly. Know. Some of the projects that you're doing, you're also mixing. Yeah, that's been a lot lately. Actually, everything I've produced uh, lately I've mixed. So produced, recorded, yeah. mixed, and played on? Yeah, I mean, obviously with other people as well. But I love helping other people and being collaborative and bringing that out. That's like, brings me life. All right, last question here. How the heck do these things work? This is, is old. They're called cable lights and it's okay. like super low voltage. So you okay. won't feel the electricity unless you touch both cables at the same time. Oh. But it, even then it's so low, it's nothing. Yeah, this has been like a, just a, it's kind of like a laboratory work studio. It's not really show, it's just come here and we make music. That's awesome, man. 
Well, it's pretty intimate, it's like really tiny. Well, it's really, really cool how you've got it set up for the different projects that you do and cool. Thanks, that man. you have a, f a foot in like the artist development, production, Nashville scene, but then in the licensing scene oh, yeah. too. But yeah, whatever you have that okay. I can share, I'll put down in the link. So if you guys want to cool. follow Robert, you can. And uh, we'll see you, again, see you guys in the next video. Awesome. Thanks, man. Cool. Thanks, dude. That's fun. <laughs>